So I've always appreciated art that invites me to look at my world in a new way. And I fell in love with these tobacco sheds the first time that I saw them. I loved how beautiful it was to see the light shining into the sheds uh, through these long vertical ventilation panels. And I thought that if I could turn that concept inside out and let the light shine out into the landscape, the light could serve as a beacon, as a spotlight, and call some attention to these tobacco sheds. Shedding Light is a public art installation, turning a 120-year-old tobacco shed on a family farm in Amherst into an architectural lantern. Um, during the darkest month of the year, in December 2009, the shed was lit every night, um, and the vertical slats of the building were left open so that the light could shine out into the landscape. The first time that I saw the tobacco sheds, I was intrigued by their simple form, um, how they harness the wind to dry the tobacco crop. And I learned more about the tobacco sheds because, you know, as an architectural designer, I'm, I'm curious about these regional buildings. And I, I learned that the tobacco sheds themselves are unique to the Connecticut River Valley. You know, tobacco is grown elsewhere in the United States and around the world, but they don't have to deal with the New England climate. And so this form of the, the simple shed roof with the long operable panels for ventilation to control the climate and humidity inside the sheds and dry the tobacco um, is, is unique to our region, and I, I love that. Here Amherst was at its 250th anniversary year, um, and I thought, what a great opportunity to draw attention to the agricultural community um, and use art as the voice for architecture, agriculture, um, and celebrate all three of those things through, through one project. When I met Erica, I was so impressed with her brilliant idea uh, to take a structure that we have taken for granted uh, in this valley and to bring a different light to it. Um, Erica found the site. Uh, she did research um, with our town maps and she wanted it by a major road so that people uh, could see it from the road. An important collaborator was the farmers. Joe and Sarah Schwartz were so supportive of this project from the beginning. The, the tobacco sheds themselves use the wind. They use the natural power of the wind um, to, to dry the crop. They're oriented to the prevailing breeze and um, they don't have to use electricity to, to, to do that work. And then there's the Swartzes, Swartz Family Farm. Their approach to sustainability is to, to farm hydroponically. They use about one-tenth of the water that conventional farming does. Um, and when Terry Rooney suggested using the power of the sun to offset the energy use for shedding light, I thought that was a fantastic idea. My initial reaction was um, that was a little different, but, but also very interesting. And then as Erica uh, and Terry talked more about the project and kind of expanded upon it, it, it became more interesting. We had uh, planned to try to incorporate a solar power source um, for the project, which unfortunately wasn't able to happen uh, in time for the initial lighting. We're still trying to work on that now. Um, so what we needed to do is we needed to tap into our electrical service here at the farm and we basically had an electrician come out and install temporary uh, power because the, these sheds aren't normally uh, powered. So we, we ran a temporary line out to the barn and all the lighting was installed in the barn and connected uh, specifically for the project. Um, we have a, a series of um, lights with their 700 watts per fixture um, and there's one in each of these bays or bents in a tobacco barn um, that we just turned on every night and they, they did their job. Because most of these sheds are still in use, um, farmers do install lighting sometimes because taking down the tobacco has to happen when weather conditions are, are correct, so many times that's at night. And so they do have the barns lit up in order to take down the tobacco. Um, so to have this done from a purely artistic or aesthetic point uh, of view was, was something that we had never really considered. 
We were blessed, I think, with one of the first snowfalls of the season on the night of the opening. When the snow started falling and Erica threw the switch, it looked like the barn had wings. It was almost a spiritual experience seeing it lit that way. People who were driving along the road uh, slowed down and you know, wondering what this unusual light is. Those folks that I got to talk with were all intrigued at the very least and some of them were really stunned. One of the biggest compliments that I received um, was the interest of other artists. There were a number of um, photographers, professional photographers, who came to um, look at the project through their own lenses, so to speak, um, and took some beautiful, beautiful photographs. Um, and a number of other artists that I had an opportunity to talk to really appreciated um, this kind of installation work. I think that it was a surprising project in many ways. It's not the kind of public art that we see uh, so often. It's not a, a sculpture. Um, it's something that kind of has a more ephemeral nature. And so there were a lot of questions. What is it? What makes this art? This project was a fantastic opportunity for collaboration. Um, we couldn't have done it without all of the many people who got involved. Uh, we had fantastic help with uh, developing a lighting scheme uh, from Bruce Wallace of Theatrics. And we talked with David Damery, a professor at UMass, um, about sustainability. And he and his students helped us to design a, a photovoltaic array. I didn't realize that it was going to take on a life of its own and was going to involve so many so many things and so many people but it really kind of uh, it became a whole <laughs> it was a community effort it was a yes, whole community did. effort absolutely. absolutely that's the best way to put it learning about the role of tobacco farming in the valley and how it used to be an enormous uh, agricultural crop and now is in decline made me even more intrigued with the, the buildings themselves. The tobacco sheds are falling into disrepair or being torn down for development. Maybe they could be saved and in the next 250 years, we might still have a few around. One of the things that is so wonderful about this project is that I feel that it honors the uh, ingenuity and hard work of our local Yankee ancestors. I would love to see more barns lit, especially the barns around uh, the airport uh, in Bradley, uh, which has one of the largest concentration of the remaining tobacco barns in the Pioneer Valley. I think that um, seeing this light from the sky would be um, fabulous. The Swartzes are very interested in, in turning the barn on again, um, and, and it's something that we would like to revisit um, perhaps next December for perhaps a shorter period of time, but we, we would like to, to, to relight the shed. And it might become an annual event, um, and it might happen just one more time, and we're not really sure. One of the things that we would really love to do is to follow through on the photovoltaic array and be able to bring that to the Swartzes um, so that it could help them to uh, farm more sustainably and it would be a nice wrap-up to this project. Mm -hmm.